A oh, very good morning, all of you. A very good morning to all the participants, dignitaries from the team GC Valsad. GC Valsad has organized one week FPP on multi objective optimization, algorithm and engineering application. We are proud that very renowned researcher from the state domain are going to deliver various session on the topic. I especially welcome Dr. R. V. Rao sir, who is renowned expert in the state domain. Welcome, sir. Now, I would, uh, without any further ado, I, I would like to start the inauguration function by inviting the coordinator of this FDP, Dr. N.M. Patel, sir. N.M. Patel, sir, to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good morning to all. Respected Professor uh, Venkata Rao, sir. Dr. B. S. Uh, Purani sir, our principal, G. C. Valsad, my colleague, friends, and participants. Uh, good morning and welcome uh, you all to this one week AICT IST sponsored faculty development program. Vishwakarma Government Engineering College is organizing which we are uh, starting from today. Uh, Multi-objective optimization is uh, the theme selected uh, uh, for this event. And we are very much happy to have our keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Rao sir. He is one of the very prominent international personality in the domain of multi-objective optimization. And we are very happy that he is from Gujarat and very close to us. And he is with us today to share his uh, expertise with us uh, at this point of uh, time. So it, we will be very much happy uh, to have with uh, him with us. Uh, I will give brief uh, background of mine. I did my PhD in this area of multi-objective optimization from uh, IIT Gandhinagar and uh, Dr. Nitin Padiyar was my student, uh, my guide uh, with whom I did my PhD. Yeah. This is the second uh, workshop on multi-objective optimization uh, which uh, we are coordinating. Two years back, a similar workshop we conducted at Vishwakarma Government Engineering College. It was uh, self finance course under ISTE and this is funded by uh, AACT IST we applied and uh, we got this approval so we are th very much thankful to AACT IST for sponsoring this event uh, we are uh, again having very good response uh, as far as faculties are concerned we have um, experts from different uh, universities in PDPU, um, Nirma University, IIT Ram, NIT uh, Surat, then IIT Varangal, and IIT Gandhinagar. So we have experts in this domain uh, which are working since very long in this area. So we are very much happy that uh, participants will be benefited uh, with their um, expertise. Uh, Vishwakarma uh, Government Engineering College Valsad, basically uh, this is the second uh, series of training we are conducting in this year. One training we conducted um, under Electrical Engineering Department which was uh, under ATAL and this is the second uh, similar type of training we are conducting at Government Engineering College Valsad. Uh, being in one uh, remote uh, location of uh, Gujarat. So, 
this on we initially were planning to conduct it in physical mode so that people come here stay here for week and but due to the situations uh, were not becoming normal ultimately because um, february end was the time by which we had to complete this so we are conducting this in online mode uh, today on uh, with us we have our principal dr uh, vs purani sir he is a very senior uh, and uh, achieving uh, lot of benchmarks so we got a lot of awards under his leadership under ssip uh, initiatives a uh, lot of uh, research initiatives also training programs we are conducting uh, uh, most of the people those who are in the system uh, they know him uh, he has a wide experience uh, in the academic as well as in the um, administrative uh, domain starting from the grassroots level as a lecturer the career from top to like up to the principal uh, he has grown uh, he has worked as a joint director uh, administrative positions uh, for very long time and during his career he has completed lot of very important projects like tq vibrant gujarat uh, mega placement a lot of uh, other projects also he has handled and government in college walsad is getting the benefit of uh, working under um, dr vs purani sir's leadership so we are very much happy uh, to have him here as a principal uh, working with him and we continuously get motivations and uh, uh, work for working uh, and taking lot of initiatives to for the growth of the institute so i uh, now request uh, our principal dr vs purani sir to address the participants so i welcome uh, dr vs purani sir please sir very good morning to all the participants uh, first of all my uh, welcome to today's uh, keynote speaker and chief guest rao sir my colleague uh, dr anand patel all uh, all the faculty friends from the state technical education system who are participating this online training program and all the participants from across the state and from other than uh, the state of gujarat today we have received a overwhelming response for participation in this training and uh, 82 uh, we wanted to take it up to 60 participants in this program but in last couple of days uh, i am told that there were overwhelming response from uh, many faculties to participate considering the topic as well as the uh, number of faculties those who are going to deliver this session during this one week training program uh rao sir first of all i wish to you and uh, i'm so happy that uh, you have given consent to be part in this uh, uh, first session to deliver your keynote uh, address uh, sir we are all uh, working we are all passing through a very uh, transition phase and to establish the academic credibility through integrated and uh, uh, multidisciplinary learning is our today's context the role of teacher is being uh, uh, totally becoming uh, uh, in such a uh, taking shape in such a way that whatever schemes we are seeing today either it is a startup india or it is a skill india or it is a unnat bharat abhiyan which we are uh, associating through uh, rit surat and this recently announced the national education policy role of teacher is becoming uh, so significant for building the career building the student life whatever the lesson you have learned from the recently ongoing uh, completed and ongoing programs 
which are either we name urusa or technical education quality improvement program part 1 part 2 part 3 and the governance which were very critically studied by the world bank and uh, they design put uh, into the practice for few institutes as a hub institute across the country so that these practices can be adopted by the other institutes uh, mostly the technical education uh, fraternity are three programs eq1 eq2 and eq3 if we can see the pib or outcome indicators defined for this eq program was mainly carrying this faculty development uh, as a core component huge financial outlay as well as the uh, indicators were uh, made available and based on that what we learned is a training need analysis today training need analysis is so important uh, we felt in our uh, uh, domain of government colleges and since for five years i am remembering in the 2017 or 17 we have introduced this uh, training need analysis and based on that the uh, selection of the training program by the faculties of the government college and polytechnic so it is totally streamlined activity in the state of gujarat under this technical education department that how faculty can identify their core area where they want to get trained and after choosing this area we are trying to make it available all the training it was when we have discussed across the state that what is the system of uh, adapting different trainings from the available uh, training programs either of aict isc majority of the training programs offered by nitdr uh, for polytechnic and degree, degree colleges but my experience it was learned that it was something what was put upon us what other training partners are carrying in their shoulders basically it was hardly felt it needed in the kind of our affiliating institutes or the state level institutes that what our faculty exactly need of so uh, by doing this by adapting this today you all will be agree that it is very well streamlined and probably we are only state we are operating through this training need analysis what are the lesson learned from the uh, three tq uh, programs now coming to this uh, start in this training program i am really so happy that the team of gc varsad is working as uh, a one team and it is a concurrent second uh, program which is under the domain of aict and uh, for the uh, faculty of the state of gujarat and uh, open to all national participants this virtual platform uh, i believe it is what we learn a new during this uh, pandemic to train and to get trained to teach passionately and to learn passionately is our profession and beyond our delivery of the lectures as per the time table if uh, we can see how we are associating our students for different activities then the core academic completion that is either it is a research it is a innovation it is a development uh, projects if it is a startup or a finishing school level programs so everywhere the ability and uh, strength of the faculties are uh, playing a very very vital and important role yesterday my colleague dr anand patel was uh, discussing with us the kind of the profile what uh, our today's keynote speaker is having 350 plus research publications and uh, the uh, citation it is really a matter of great privilege and pride to be associated with the kind of person uh, in this training program and we all look forward to make somewhere the better uh, contribution as a teacher we all must agree that it is the only the noble and uh, divine profession where we all can contribute 
my guru always uh, used to say me that your efficiency is not required you are efficient so you are there but what is the requirement is your contribution how you contribute in uh, building career of the students nurturing a uh, faculty strength and overall uh, making the name of the institutes uh, which improve the merit of the students so my warm welcome on this virtual platform and i request everyone to help a visit to this uh, beautiful place walsad gc walsad is among the uh, best uh, colleges in the state of gujarat carrying a very beautiful campus near to a uh, very well known tithal uh, beach just 2 km away and it is a district head quarter it is on the small town but the core values of the faculties in the institute i really uh, happy to uh, give this note and to uh, convey that try to take a visit as also and uh, be in contact whosoever are the participants other than these uh, gc and gps i know it lastly i would like to uh, share one uh, very good quote i always remember that if uh, candle is not lit it cannot light others similarly if teacher is not learning they cannot teach students it is a very good quote of our guru ravindra tagore and with this we always try to keep learning learning and learning every day and uh, i would say as uh, an professor has told that we are working together since uh, our uh, lectureship when we joined the field cadet to the post of principal uh, i would only say by making or building career of the students uh, my career was built uh, simultaneously side by side so with this i give once again uh, welcome to all the participants to this uh, wonderful training program i am sure we are going to uh, try to justify the best whatever possible for uh, this training program and uh, we'll uh, try to share the proceedings kind of uh, document also and i request all the participants to be in a uh, network with each other networking is one of the great strength for our uh, fraternity and uh, will definitely look forward to welcome you uh, on this campus and i will put my request to the nearby uh, nid director uh, rao sir to be grace to come uh, in person to our campus and motivate our teachers and faculty uh, thank you so much to be with this uh, in this training program Namaskar. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. V. S. Purani sir, our principal, for your motivating uh, speech. Uh, now I uh, welcome our uh, today's keynote speaker, Dr. Professor R. Venkata Rao sir. Uh, Dr. Rao sir is professor in higher administrative uh, grade in Department of Mechanical Engineering. SNIT Surat and he is currently working as a inja director of the institute uh, as already prani sir mentioned that he has more than 30 years of teaching and research experience uh, he has completed his btech in 88 mtech in 1991 and phd in 2002 and dsc in 2017 uh, dr rao sir's uh, research interest includes advanced optimization uh, algorithms and their applications to design thermal and manufacturing engineering which is uh, one of the domain of our training uh, dr rao sir has uh, more than 350 research papers in his credit published in national and international journals and conference proceedings he has received many national and international awards for his research efforts uh, his h index Uh, is 63 so which is uh, we rarely uh, find uh, our h index in two digits uh, two digits but sir has h index of 63 which is uh, indicates uh, the research contribution and 
citations in his credit. So this is really uh, amazing for us. Even uh, he is uh, on the editorial board of several international journals. Sir has conducted a lot of short-term training programs uh, for faculty members and uh, professionals on this area of advanced optimization. Uh, he has handled a lot of research projects also, uh, including um, bilateral projects with Australia, Russia, and Slovenia. So, uh, sir has an international, um, and already we know that sir is an um, international uh, personality. We can just see his profile, uh, Google, and we can see that uh, also. Uh, he has authored uh, seven books, and all uh, these books have been published by Stranger. So we are very much happy to have Rao sir with us today, uh, with us. Actually, this uh, training, basically, um, we are conducting in online mode because of the current graduation, but when two years back, we conducted the first uh, series of training, I propose with my guide that we will conduct in a workshop mode such that we identify a topic where people come work on that topic and uh, at the end of the workshop they must have published a paper. So that was that should be an outcome of the training that every participant in a group of two or three they have a research at least conference publication in their name. Uh, so uh, definitely I uh, wish that that can be the next stage uh, to this training that we will uh, have a group of 20, 30 people from this participant who will join uh, one workshop and uh, at least 10 to 12 uh, papers, uh, which may be through maybe conference, we will be journals, which will be the outcome of those workshops. So, and uh, definitely we will connect with uh, uh, today's um, speaker, Ramsar, for that guidance for uh, that, that work also, sir. So, I welcome you, sir, uh, for your great address. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Professor Anand Patel, for the exaggerated introduction. Ah. Yes, you are able to hear me? Uh, Professor Anand Patel, you are able to hear me? Sir, you are audible, sir. Audible, no? Okay. Okay. Ah. Ah, yes, yeah. mm. In fact, I don't want to show my... Sir, Ah, we are not yes. audible, sir. Ah, that is what I am. Um, Why it happened? I am um, seeing. Uh, audible now or not? Not audible. Training programs and people can uh, sit anywhere, uh, there any person from anywhere in the world. They can do the lecture, they can attend the lecture. Okay, Professor Patel, you are able to hear me now. Yes, yes, I am able to hear you. Okay, okay. okay now I uh, just to move in the normal way. Uh, thank you very much, our uh, Professor V. S. Purani, sir, who is the principal of Don McKinney College, Warsaw, for giving very inspirational uh, speech, particularly to the participants. And uh, definitely, we will be having our uh, what we say collaboration, collaboration in the coming days also. And uh, now I am seeing uh, some teachers like Sandeep Patel, I have identified him by his photograph that uh, I think probably he has done his uh, coursework from our SVNIT. There is a lot of scope for collaboration that we are, as you are in the government setup, we are also in a similar setup. There is a lot of possibility and uh, uh, we will think about it. Already we are doing some works, but we have to enhance those activities in the coming uh, days or months. And uh, I have seen that this uh, multi-object optimization, algorithms and Indian applications, this is sponsored by AACTE. 
and uh, 21 sessions are scheduled for during all these days of the training program. And uh, I have seen that two are general, general sessions like Art of Living and uh, our new education policy. New education policy, uh, I think our Purani Sahib, he is going to uh, deliver that talk. That is very important and all the faculty members say how to know about the new education policy and what is it all about and what it offers and what, how a faculty member should mold himself or herself to, to face the challenges of new education policy. So that way this program is well balanced, not only giving the, providing the technical content to the participants but also about the art of living that is also important. Nowadays, particularly under the stressful environment in which we are working and we are living. So, art of living is very important. And yes, as we are in the teaching profession, we have to understand what is a new education policy. So, those two sessions are um, equally uh, important in this training program. And Professor Anand Patil, I think he has done his PhD from uh, UT. Gandhi Nagar, probably under that Nitin uh, Barrier, I think. And I am very thankful. And normally, whenever any organizer invites me, I don't hesitate. I don't hesitate to uh, deliver the lectures. In fact, I want to party and interact, interact with many participants. But the problem with these online training programs, uh, many times I got disappointed because every year, particularly during this corona time, Wherever programs are conducted related to optimization, I have been invited to deliver two hours lecture or one hour lecture or 1.5 hours lecture like that. But what I have seen the participants in the beginning, they will be there and after some time, just number getting reduced. Or some people who have logged in, they are simply logged in. They might not be concentrating on the presentation, they might be busy in some other works. So, uh, actually, my duki was at home by that. This is a trend which I observed everywhere, not only with me, with all the speakers, with all the speakers. And so that is, but some, but what is uh, my philosophy? Out of 100 participants, even if four or five participants have understood, have understood the topic, and they can take advantage of this topic, then I can say the purpose of the training program is served. Is served. As Professor Anand Patel is saying that he is expecting a good number of research publications from the participants. Yes, I am happy to share with you that during the training programs conducted by me, many research scholars, PhD students, and some MTech students, and some faculty members who are doing their uh, research works to acquire PhD degree. Many of them were benefited. They got their um, degrees or PhD degrees. And after getting PhD degrees, they got promotions also. And uh, certain faculty members who are already having PhD but attended my training programs, assistant professor or associate professor level. And even some professor level candidates also from different universities and NITs, they used to attend my program as participants. So, what these process and uh, associate process who were already having PhD, what they had done, they had learned the techniques and then they went back, they disseminated that uh, information to their students and uh, to the students of their institute. So that way, the, if you call that as knowledge or information, that is disseminated and many people have uh, been benefited. Many researchers have been benefited. And that is the purpose of conducting any training program. So I request all the participants to be attentive during all the days of the training program. It is not simply logging in and then um, getting the attendance or participation certificate. We should not look for only participation certificate. Particularly nowadays in online training programs, one can get 100 certificates in a year. It is quite possible. I have seen in uh, Hyderabad one... Uh, PhD student was claiming in the presence of his guide that he has attended more than 400 training programs and he was displaying those certificates. It came in the media, news channels. He was proudly, he was proudly announcing that he has got more than 400 certificates in a year, in a year. And his guide, that professor, shamelessly he was praising his student. 
But 400 training programs means I can understand that he is simply labeling, registered labeling. And uh, whether he really is an admin, that only he knew. But I am 100% sure that he hardly attended any, uh, hardly understood any topic of those training programs which he registered himself. So that should not be the case. And I am um, uh, confident that under the leadership of our Professor V.S. Purani, the faculty members, they are more disciplined and they will definitely attend the training program and they gain some new knowledge or information so that they can make use of this information for themselves and they can disseminate this information to the students also. Similarly, the participants from outside the government in college your side, they also, I request them to be serious to attend the training program, not only my lecture, all lectures, all 21 sessions, and then something new. Because attending the training program will definitely add at least to delta x amount of new knowledge to your existing knowledge base. With this, I conclude because I have my own uh, presentation immediately. And uh, afterwards, at 11.30, I have to take one class to be like uh, first year students online. So I have to wind up my uh, presentation in any case by 11.25. And uh, I thank once again our Purani Sahib and Anand Patel, Sandeep Patel and all other organizers of this training program for inviting me to act as the chief guest and to deliver this presentation. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, Yes, and uh, Professor Anand Patel, uh, can I start my presentation? Yes, okay. Okay, now let me uh, share. Let me share. Okay. In fact, now I am new to this uh, Microsoft team. I am more familiar with Google Meet and uh, Zoom. So, but anyway, for your sake, I am... Uh, yes, okay. Let me... Let me share this. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, Professor Patel, you are able to see this uh, PowerPoint? Yes, 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 sir. Okay, that multi object optimization is written. So, optimization, uh, your first line is visible. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. And uh, sometimes I may keep it in the uh, slideshow mode and sometimes I may not keep uh, because I have to highlight certain portions and okay now let us go ahead straight into the topic and yes. okay. okay and here participants uh, now you are attending this is the first session of the training program a faculty development program on multi-object optimization and uh, definitely the speakers the next speakers they will explain you much more about multi-object optimization and various algorithms and what are the engineering applications and all. But as a beginning, as a beginning, let me give you introduction, introduction about the optimization and then what is multi-object optimization. And then I will uh, demonstrate a method which has been recently developed. That is, uh, that was developed last year in 2021, which may be of use to you in the uh, next few months. You may apply that to new method which I am going to show in your research problem. Okay, what is optimization? This all, everyone knows, everyone knows what is optimization because if there is some, uh, somebody is distributing money, somebody is distributing money, then what we want, we want maximum amount of money. We want to collect maximum amount of money from that person who is foolishly distributing the money. And now take the other way that uh, somebody somebody is asking us, Are you do this uh, load carrying work. You take this load uh, of, say, uh, 30 kg, 30 kg of weight is here. You shift this 30 kg of weight from uh, this room to the next room. Then what do you think? You want to put the maximum effort? No, obviously no. You want to put to minimum effort. You want to put minimum effort. It may so happen that you may um, avoid doing that work. But if at all you, are, you do that work, you want to do it with minimum pain or minimum effort. 
So everyone in the daily life, they know about what is optimization. In that word, they may not be knowing optimization, but this is in our daily use. Maximizing the benefit, minimizing the effort. Maximizing the benefit or minimizing the effort. So that is why the optimum, optimum is taken to mean maximum or mean depending on the circumstances. Depending on the circumstances. As I said that if somebody is distributing money to public, then we want to collect more money. We want to maximize our benefit. But if we are required to do some work, then we want to minimize the effort. And similarly, minimum cost. If any machine we want to buy, then we want to buy it at minimum cost, but with maximum efficiency. Machine we want to have maximum efficiency, but at the same time, we want it at a minimum price. That may not be possible, but our uh, optimum sense is that. Optimum sense is we want to maximum efficiency machine, but at a minimum price. So the word optimum is taken to mean maximum or minimum depending on the circumstance. The ultimate goal of technological and manage relations is either to minimize the effort required or to maximize the desired benefit. This is now applicable not only to technological and manage relations, our daily life relations. Our daily life relations also, our goal is to minimize the effort required or to maximize the desired benefit. Desired benefit. And now, since the effort required or the benefit desired in any practical situation can be expressed as a function of certain decision variables, because if we can develop a mathematical model, mathematical model for this um, objective function of uh, maximizing the uh, desired benefit or minimizing the effort required, if we can identify some decision variables and then we model the problem uh, in a mathematical model in terms of these decision variables, then uh, there are certain ways to find out what are the optimum values of the decision variables, which will give us the maximum desired benefit or minimum effort. So optimization can be defined as the process of finding the conditions that give the maximum or minimum value of a function. For example, you take this small example, a furniture company data, a furniture company data, uh, that furniture company is making tables and chairs, tables and chairs. And uh, the profit for each table, the profit for each table, that is, uh, yes, uh, okay, that is all right. Just one minute, let me see this. Mm -hmm. The profit for each table is $7, and profit for each chair is $5. And uh, to make each table three hours of, uh, three hours are required in the carpentry shop. And uh, two hours of painting required for each table. This is the requirement. Each table requires three hours of carpentry operations and uh, two hours of painting operations. Profit on each table is $7. And coming to chairs, profit contribution for each chair. That means by selling the chair, the profit is $5. And uh, each chair requires four hours of carpentry operation and one hour of painting operation, one hour of painting operation. And uh, given a chance, given a chance, then uh, furniture company owner, how many tables and how many chairs he wants to make? Given a chance, given an opportunity, how many tables and how many chairs the furniture company owner um, can make? Can make, uh, if no, there are no other conditions. Then infinite number of tables he wants to make. Infinite number of chairs he wants to make. Because on each table, $7 is the profit. So make infinite number of tables. On each chair, $5 is the profit. If you make infinite number of chairs, that much he wants. Uh, given a chance. But that chance is not given. There are some constraints. Because he is having the machinery and the manpower such that the carpentry shop maximum capacity is 2,400 hours. 2,400 hours only. Similarly, painting shop, the capacity is a thousand hours available only. So this is the constraint, constraint. Then other limitations are also there. Make at least 100 tables. The number of tables should not be less than 100. And make no more than 450 chairs. That means number of chairs should not be more than 450. These are the conditions. Then 
how to give what are the decision variables decision variables are how many number of tables and how many number of chairs we have to find out we have to find out how many number of tables how many number of chairs so we don't know furniture company does one or does not know because they given a chance he wants to make infinite number of tables and infinite number of chairs but his carpentry shop capacity is limited painting shop capacity is limited and there are some other conditions like this then uh, how to decide hmm, that uh, number of tables and number of chairs to make so let x1 be the number of tables and x2 be the number of chairs that x1 and x2 values are not known not known before he has to find out he has to find out so let x1 is the number of tables then on each table 7 dollar is the profit so on x1 number of tables the profit will be 7x1 then on each chair the profit is 5 dollar if x2 number of chairs are made the profit will be 5 times x2 on the chairs then what will be the total profit by making tables and chairs that will be 7x1 plus 5x2 7x1 plus 5x2 that will be the total profit on these x1 number of tables and x2 number of chairs then what are these constraints each table is requiring 3 hours so x1 number of tables require 3x1 hours each chair is requiring 4 hours so x2 number of chairs requires 4x2 hours and what is the maximum capacity available in the carpentry shop 2400 hours that means 3x1 plus 4x2 that should be less than or equal to 2400 because available capacity is only 2400 so 3x1 plus 4x2 should be less than or equal to 2400 similarly come to this constraint on painting one table is requiring 2 hours so x1 number of tables require 2x1 hours and one chair is requiring 1 hour so x2 number of chair is requires 1 into x2 hours so total time is 2x1 plus 1x2 2x1 plus 1x2 so that should be less than or equal to 1000 because the available capacity is this much only we cannot write 2 hours of 2x1 plus 1x2 greater than or equal to 1000 we cannot write because available capacity is only 1000 so 2x1 plus 1x2 less than or equal to 1000 now come to the other limitations make at least 100 tables tables so we are thinking x1 number of tables so x1 should be greater than or equal to 100 because at least 100 tables na no? x1 greater than or equal to 100 and make no more than 450 chairs that means uh, number of chairs x2 so x2 should be less than or equal to 450 because no more than so x2 should be less than or equal to 450 so if we write that to as mathematical model we have this model we have this model maximize 7x1 plus 5x2 subject to the constraints so this 3x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 2400 carpentry constraint 2x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 1000 painting constraint and the number of chairs should be less than or equal to 450 and number of tables should be at least 200 so greater than or equal to 100 obviously the number of tables and chairs greater than or equal to 0 non negativity constraint because greater than because if you don't make the tables or chairs then zero if you make then they will be 1 2 3 4 like that they cannot be negative number of tables are negative number of chairs so this is the mathematical model if we can solve this if you can see this is a linear program simple simple linear programming model just to give you the idea basic idea i have i am showing you this example so if you can solve for this x1 and x2 if you can find out this x1 and x2 which will satisfy these constraints these constraints which will satisfy all these constraints given then uh, we can say that is the optimum value we have to find out what is that way many solutions may many solutions of x1 and x2 may satisfy these conditions but out of those uh, satisfying sets of x1 and x2 we have to find out which set of x1 and x2 will give us the maximum profit maximum profit those x1 and x2 values will be called optimum values and when you substitute those values in x1 and in this expression we get the maximum profit that is the optimum value of that profit to function and uh, this is uh, about 
and this here these are only two variables so you can easily do it even by graphical method two dimensional graphical method and uh, when you solve this when you solve this you will get i think x1 has 320 and x2 has 360 x1 has 320 and x2 has 360 that means number of tables 320 number of chairs 360 there those will be the optimum values of tables and chairs and if you substitute that uh, x1 has a 320 and x2 has 360 you will get the maximum profit so that is the solution this is graphical method these details i am not going into the, going into and see, that is the maximization problem now let us uh, take uh, another problem here another problem here here to determine the optimum levels of products to manufacture manufacture here there are two divisions in the manufacturing plant division 1 makes only product 1 and division 2 makes only product 2 this is the data you can see here the data the product 1 requires raw material 20 units the units may be kg or whatever so raw material in units so 20 kg of raw material is required to make each product 1 40 kg of raw material is required for making each of product 2 but what is the total amount of raw material available only 400 units 400 units and machine processing time this product 1 it requires 5 hours for processing and product 2 requires 2 hours for processing and total hours available with the machine for processing product 1 and product 2 only 40 hours are available and division 1 that can make only maximum 6 you see here quantity of resource 6 units of product 1 the division can make and division 2 can make 9 units of uh, product 2 these are the limitations these are the limitations and uh, if you come to the percent contribution to profit is 100 dollar for each unit of product 1 and 60 dollar for each unit of product 2 that means if you make a product 1 each unit will give you 100 dollar profit and if you make product 2 each unit will give you 60 dollars of profit question is how many units of product 1 and how many units of product 2 to make suppose as manufacturer does not know in the beginning let him think that x1 is the number of uh, units of product 1 and x2 is the number of units of product 2 then what is the profit function that will be 100 x1 plus 60 x2 because 100 dollar is the profit on each unit of product 1 so by x1 number of units of product 1 profit will be 100 x1 similarly here 60 x2 so 100 x1 plus 60 x2 that is the objective function yes that is profit function we have to we want to maximize it then what are the constraint each unit of product 1 is requiring 20 hours uh, 20 yeah, units of raw material 20 kg of raw material so when you are thinking to make x1 number of product 1 then 20 x1 20 x1 will be the raw material units and 40 x2 will be the raw material units for product 2 uh, in x2 so 20 x1 plus 40 x2 20 x1 plus 40 x2 that will be the total amount of raw material required for making x1 number of product 1 and x2 number of product 2 20 x1 plus 40 x2 that should be less than or equal to 400 because available raw material is only 400 so our constraint is 20x1 plus 40x2 less than or equal to 400 similarly if you take the machine processing time each unit of product 1 is requiring 5 hours so x1 number of product 1 requires 5x1 hours similarly here 2x2 hours so total hours 5x1 plus 2x2 should be less than or equal to 40 and then here x1 that is number of units of product 1 that should be less than or equal to 6 because division 1 can make only 6 units and division 2 is making only product 2 so x2 x2 should be less than or equal to 9 x2 should be less than or equal to 9 so by doing that sir bole che pehle please turn off your mics Uh, please come up your mics the coordinators are requested to mute those participants
चिराग पटेल और माइक हेलो डॉक्टर राव प्लीज अनम्यूट योर माइक वी आर नॉट एबल टू हियर राव सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल ओके व्हाट अबाउट दिस पोर्शन आई हैड आई एक्सप्लेन दिस पोर्शन yes sir and this uh, second example i had explained professor anand ji you can reply yes yes so you are discussing the equations modeling equation you are this modeling and equation part i have explained that man yeah, you started okay and okay, uh, now was, uh, okay okay let me continue because here if we want to make x1 number of product 1 and x2 number of product 2 the raw material constraint can be written as 20x1 plus 40x2 less than or equal to 400 and this is audible professor patel yes sir audible sir okay because why we are writing 20x1 plus 40x2 because each product 1 requires 20 units of raw material each product 2 requires 40 units of raw material if we want to make it x1 number of product 1 then 20 x1 uh, units of raw material required 40 x2 units of raw material are required so 20 x1 plus 40 x2 that should be less than or equal to 400 similarly 5 x1 plus 2 x2 that will be the total machine processing time to make x1 of product 1 and x2 of product 2 that should be less than or equal to 40 and as division 1 can make only x1 uh, number number of units uh, six number of units our x1 should be less than or equal to 6 division 2 can make only product 2 maximum 9 it can make so x2 should be less than or equal to 9 then we have this uh, objective function maximizing the profit 100 x1 plus 60 x2 because on each product 1 we have 100 dollar profit on each product 2 we need, we have 60 dollar of profit so 100 x1 plus 60 x2 that is the objective function and we want to find out what are those optimum values of x1 and x2 which will satisfy all these constraints all these constraints raw material constraint machine processing time constraint capacity constraint of division 1 and capacity constraint of division 2 then non negativity constraint non negativity constraints means that if you make these products then x1 is if you don't make then x1 is zero x2 is zero if you make them those will be in some numbers 1 2 3 4 like they cannot be non they cannot be negative negative number of units are not there so this is obvious so x1 greater than or equal to and x2 greater than or equal to 0 then if you solve if you solve these expressions keeping in you then uh, if you get the values of x1 and x2 that will give the maximum value of the objective function then those are called optimum values of x1 and x2 So, uh, keeping in view of all these constraints, you have to find the uh, values of x1 and x2. You may get to many values, many combinations of x1 and x2. Out of those combinations, a particular combination may give you the maximum profit. So, whichever combination is giving the maximum profit, that we call as optimum combination of x1 and x2. And okay. that is of course this is these are two variables only so by graphical method also we can do and here is a minimization problem a minimization problem here what is happening she one lady was there she wants to spend money for food and she needs daily this much energy requirement this is much protein requirement and this much calcium requirement and she takes i think uh, uh, six varieties of food items oat milk chicken eggs whole milk cherry pie pork with beans like that 
and uh, energy contained by each serving is given like this and the protein served by each serving those data is given similarly calcium because she needs this energy protein and calcium uh, in her daily food but at the same time we have to understand these food items will not come cheap this example i have taken from uh, website so it is in american units so cents price for serving so these are the prices for each serving and uh, here the aim is minimizing the cost minimizing the cost because minimizing the total price or minimizing the total amount which she has to spend for the two food items then uh, how many servings she should take of oatmeal how many servings she should take of chicken like that we have to formulate and uh, as time is running out i simply directly show you the model uh, here servings per day limits are also there oatmeal at most to four servings per day chicken at most to three servings per day and if you think that x1 is the number of servings x1 is the number of servings of oatmeal then x1 should be less than or equal to 4 if you feel x2 is the number of servings of chicken daily then x2 should be less than or equal to 3 if x3 is the number of servings of x then x3 should be less than or equal to 2 so like that we can write the hmm, conditions and this is the mathematical model so minimize the cost the price 3x1 plus because x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 these are the number of servings of each food item each food item and this this 3 3 is the price in cents for each serving of that particular food item if x1 is the number of servings then 3x1 will be the cost 3x1 will be the price similarly 24 cents is the price for the second food item and if to yes mm -hmm. as we have said the number of servings x1 should be less than or equal to 4 x2 should be less than or equal to 3 x3 number of servings should be less than or equal to 2 of that food item then these constraints you see constraints now how these constraints are there just to one minute i show you here for example energy each serving of these six food items they are giving this much energy this much energy so if x1 number of servings are there of oatmeal then energy will be 110 x1 kilo calorie If x2 number of servings are there of chicken, then energy will be 205 x2. Then 160 x3 of x, 160 x4 of whole milk, 420 x5 of cherry pie, 260 x6 of four quid beans. So how much is the total energy she will get if she takes x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6 servings of these food items? 110 x1 plus 205 x2 plus 160 x3 plus 160 x4. Plus 420 x5 plus 260 x6. So this will be the total amount of energy she will get by taking those servings of who x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and x6 of who these six food items. What is her energy requirement? The energy requirement is 2000 kilo calorie. So this total energy what she gets, this what she will uh, uh, get that should be greater than or equal to 2000. Uh, if she is very diet conscious diet conscious that she does not want to take even a single extra kilo calorie then make this uh, equal to 2000 instead of greater than or equal to instead of greater than or equal to you write the equation simply as equal to so like that here you see this equation 110x1 plus 205x2 plus 160x3 so this equation greater than or equal to 2000 similarly on protein requirement on calcium requirement we can write this equation now you see this uh, there are six uh, variables six addition variables are there in the first two examples we have only two variables x1 and x2 even graphical method we can solve those um, those problems for x1 and x2 but here six variables are there how to solve graphical method will not be useful even three dimensional graph also will not serve our purpose six dimensional graph we should have that is not possible that and so some other method we have to find out and here you can observe the first two examples are maximization problems and this third example is minimization problem single objective first problem also having only maximum profit example uh, objective second problem also maximum profit objective this third example minimum price minimize the price this is the objective here and uh, these are the um, constraints constraints 
either greater than or equal to or less than or equal to or equal to that type of constraints and the ranges of variables ranges of variables like x1 less than or equal to 4 means it should be between 0 to 4 x2 less than or equal to 3 means it should be between 0 to 3 like that ranges are there so what is the general form of this optimization problems what are the constituents of the optimization problems if you see objective function in all our three examples we have seen single objective function but there can be more than one objective in that case we call as multiple objectives multiple objectives those are expressed in terms of the design variables or decision variables design variables we can also call them as decision variables that x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and x6 and the constraints expressed in terms of the design variables we have seen that in this example these are the constraints this greater than or equal to type these constraints and in the previous examples we have seen less than or equal to type so constraints of the design variables in some problems constraints may not be there those problems are called unconstrained optimization problems because certain problems may not be having constraints and in that case only objective function and uh, ranges of the you know, design variables those are called unconstrained optimization problems so okay now let us go to our multiple objective optimization actually this training program is about that multiple objective optimization what is this multiple objective optimization now let us consider two objectives let us consider two objectives we should have one objective now we have the problem with two objectives one objective is minimize the cost f1 function f1 and the second objective is maximize the efficiency objective function is f2 f2 these f1 and f2 those are expressed in terms of foldation variables x1 x2 x3 x4 foldation variables are there foldation variables are there and the constraints are written here constraints are written here that x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 less than or equal to 150 like this constraints are written and these are only fictitious examples i have given and that two linear examples i have given but in actual practice these can be non linear also these can be non linear expressions of these objective functions here i have taken linear linear expressions for these objective functions but they can be non linear also and okay the constraints also can be linear or they can be non linear or any so here as this is for example sake i am showing you this but once you understand the basics then the same basic knowledge you can apply to any complicated problem then the ranges of variables are given here what are these ranges x1 can be between 0 to 50 x2 can be between 0 to 32 x3 can be between 0 to 44 x4 can be between 0 to 18 that means x1 and x2 can take the x3 x4 can take any value within the given ranges then here uh, actually what is the ideal case ideal case how much cost what can be the minimum cost what we want we want it should be zero ideally speaking cost we want it to be zero and uh, efficiency we want it to be 100% 100% efficiency we want and uh, so those are the ideal conditions but we have to now simultaneously solve these two objectives these two objectives are to be solved simultaneously that means what you have to find out such a combination of x1 x2 x3 x4 which will give us the optimum value of cost and optimum value of efficiency but is it possible so there is conflict because if you suppose you want to buy a machine you want to buy a machine so machine you want to have a maximum efficiency but maximum efficiency machine will not come at low price you have to pay more money for that sophisticated machine so if you want to have um, uh, if you want if you are willing to spend only little amount of money then only small efficiency machine only will uh, come to you so uh, how to achieve this maximum efficiency we want to achieve and at the same time uh, spending less money that is minimum cost so this type of problems are called multi objective optimization problems actually here two objectives are there strictly speaking this should be called as bi objective optimization problem bi objective two objectives if there are three objectives tri objective optimization problem tri objective optimization problem and uh, 
four objectives then okay multi objective fifth five fifth objective multi object like that earlier what they used to do uh, when you are solving the objective functions more than one more than one they used to call those problems as multi objective optimization problems even if objectives are 2 3 4 5 6 7 whatever they used to call those problems as multi objective optimization problems but even though they call them as multi objective optimization problems if you see the literature you will find that most of those problems are actually uh, two objectives or at the most three objectives either two objectives or at the most two, uh, three objectives like the majority majority of the problems attempted in the literature if you see majority of them belong to uh, two dimensional or uh, two objectives or three objectives even though they called as multi objective multi objective means any number na more than one more than one means that can be any number it may be 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 any number but asal mein kya hua if you see the literature you will find only few only few problem um, approaches they used um, four objectives five objectives or six objectives like that but majority mainly dealing with those two objectives or at the most three objectives but recently recently since last few years since last few years now focus is now on solving uh, really more number of objectives like uh, five objectives 6 7 8 9 10 like that there are some uh, cases which are coming up so since last few years this work is going on then how to differentiate earlier you have already called uh, solving more than one objective problem as multi objective problem now the person who has published paper by solving two objectives problem he also claims that he has solved multi objective optimization problem and a person who has solved six objectives he also naming the paper he does not want to name the paper as multi objective optimization no? because the person who has done only with two objectives he is already calling that approach as multi objective optimization but the person researcher who is solving a problem with six six objectives so he wants to be different so that is why since a few years another term has come up that is called many objective optimization many objective optimization just to differentiate from the multi objective optimization this many objective optimization word has come that if you solve more than four objectives even some discussion is there they say that even four objectives we can call that as many objective optimization problem because that is all actually useless discussion because more than one object either multi or many if you see the dictionary you will find the meaning is the same but it is all the what we say jargon jargon is there uh, uh, that is uh, uh, if you solve two objectives or three objectives you call that as multi object optimization problem four objectives are more than those then you name that as many object optimization problem this is the trend going on now so many objective optimization problem means number of objectives are more than uh, four more than four mm, or sometimes even four objective solving also they are calling as many objective optimization problem but whatever is the um, number whether 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 2, problem is that whatever whatever solution you get for the addition variables x1 x2 x3 x4 like that those should give the optimum values of all objective functions optimum compromise it is a compromise solution a compromise solution only we can have for example let like, suppose if you are married your spouse may be asking uh, one objective and uh, you may be having one objective then how uh, one has to finally solve na no? solve and a compromise solution only you have to arrive at compromise solution so the solution which you get in this multi object optimization that is a compromise solution that is not to the best solution because the best solution for one object to may not be the best for the second object and the best solution for the second object to may not be the best for the first object so that is why a compromise a compromise solution we have to find out so what are those values of x1 x2 x3 x4 we have to see for example in this two object to optimization problem which we call as multi object optimization i take x1 0 x2 0 x3 0 and x4 0 let us take because x1 x2 x3 x4 can take any value within the given ranges 
let us say x1 0 x2 0 x3 0 x4 0 then i substitute in the constraints those values i substitute in the constraints constraints are satisfied uh, don't get to shock because you substitute here 0 plus 2 times 0 plus 0 0 0 definitely less than 150 so constraint is satisfied similarly here 0 less than 170 0 less than 128 so constraints are satisfied then you substitute these values of 0 0 0 0, 0 in the cost expression cost expression you will get to 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 plus 1.5 times 0 plus 0 0.8 times 0. 0. I congratulate you for achieving your ideal objective value of 0. 0. But before congratulating you, let me substitute the same values in the second objective function. If I substitute the same values of 0, 0, 0, 0, there I get efficiency also at 0. So this solution I don't want. This solution I don't want. Because cost is definitely zero for this set of x1, x2, x3, x4. But efficiency is also coming at zero. So I neglect that. Even though it is a solution, because that has satisfied the constraints. So please see, that solution has satisfied the constraints. But it is not uh, liked by us. So throw away that solution. Then next to take another combination of x1, x2, x3, x4. Any value within the given range. Any value within the given range x1 5 and x2 31, x3 3 2 and x4 6. Substitute those values in the constraints. I have not substituted, so you also don't try. This is only a fictitious demonstration. Suppose these well, after substituting these values, constraints are satisfied. Suppose, suppose the constraints are satisfied here. Then once these are satisfied, then put these values of x1 5, x2 31, x3 2, x4 6 in both these objective functions, in both these objective functions, then you will get a certain value of cost and certain value of efficiency. Some values you will be having. Okay. Then next to take another set of x1, x2, x3, x4. x1, 0, x2, 14, x3, 39, x4, 9. Suppose you have taken those values randomly within the given range. Randomly within the given range. Suppose when you substituted here, you suppose you understand constraints are not satisfied. Out of these three, either three are not satisfied or two are not satisfied or one constraint is not satisfied. Let us say those are not satisfied. So when uh, the three constraints are not satisfied, then we think that this solution, this solution is not a feasible solution. This is not a feasible solution. So ignore it. Ignore it. Don't substitute that in the cost equation and efficiency equation. Ignore this. Then take another set. Take another set, x1, 49, and x2, 2, x3, 4, and x4, 0. And uh, these values are taken randomly within the given ranges of x1, x2, x3, x4. Substitute those values in the constraints. Suppose constraints are satisfied. Suppose. Suppose constraints are satisfied. Then substitute those values in the cost and efficiency equation. We will get some other value of cost, some other value of efficiency. Similarly, another set of x1, x2, x3, x4. Check whether constraints are satisfied or not. If satisfied, then you substitute in the cost and efficiency equation. If not satisfied, if constraints are not satisfied, then you ignore that solution. And that way, then how many combinations of x1, x2, x3, x4 you will check? Because you see, x1 can take any value between 0 to 50. x2 can take any value between 0 to 32. x3 can take any value between 0 to 44. x4 can take any value between 0 to 18. Then uh, what combinations we can try? How many combinations we can try? That is a question. Na? So a large number. A large number. And that too, if these are integers, then I say that very, very large number. But if they are in uh, decimals, uh, real values, real values, suppose x1 is 1.89, x2 is 31.34, x3 is 28.73, X4 is 2.86. If something like that, then we say almost infinite. Infinite number of solutions are possible. Then out of those, whichever solution which satisfies the constraints and giving us the minimum cost and maximum efficiency that we consider as the optimum set. You please understand, there are 
a large number of choices you see that is why multi object approximation problems have decision variable values which are determined in a continuous or integer domain with either an infinite or a large number of choices the best of which should satisfy the decision makers constraints and preference priorities there exist to you see infinite number of solutions and they because the variables can take uh, uh, can take any value within their boundaries then how to find out how to find out which combination of x1 x2 x3 x4 will give us the minimum cost and maximum efficiency compared to all other combinations of these x1 x2 x3 x4 how to find for that there are methods available like this methods to solve of course multi object approximation mvo is also called multi object decision making problems there are solution methods of course we can combine those two equations also in the priori approach in a posteriori approach we need not combine there are various approaches because within this one hour i may not be able to explain you all that but what do you think there are methods we can solve the combined objective function using traditional approaches like simplex method dynamic programming separable programming etc advanced approximation methods such as genetic algorithm multi objective very multi objective versions of these can be used genetic algorithm simulated learning priori approach we use the combined objective function posteriori approach we don't use the combined objective function we use both the functions separately only there we use the multi objective versions of these algorithms which i have listed here genetic algorithm for example the multi objective version nga or nga2 and uh, recently we have nga3 also those versions can be used for solving the multi object approximation problems similarly other advanced approximation methods simulated and then particle swarm optimization and colony optimization artificial bee colony algorithm gray wolf optimization dragon fly algorithm sine cosine tlb algorithm etc so many so many optimization algorithms are available now now particularly during last to 10 years as rather i say after 2016 after 2016 during last 6 7 years there is a huge rush in the optimization market in the optimization market because now people are more aware of these optimization algorithms so even i tell you the participants we have developed our own algorithms like tlb algorithm j algorithm rav algorithms like that and they have found their own slot in the optimization field they have carved their own niche but uh, now we the participants who have attended my training programs they also try to develop uh, new optimization algorithms so okay that i like their spirit so the uh, world wide what have what is happening now in the field of optimization if you see the version latest issues of the optimization journals you will find every issue a new optimization algorithm is proposed by someone different journals are there so you can find different optimization algorithms proposed every year and uh, i can rather use the word now optimization market optimization market is congested with many uh, new optimization algorithms of course uh, many of them will die many of them will die there will not be any takers there will not be any takers because a researcher may claim that he or she has developed a new optimization algorithm and he will apply that he will apply that to his research problem uh, and uh, he may uh, do some manipulations at his level manipulation may doesn't mean that uh, uh, some um, false work he is doing that uh, adjusting adjusting the parameters of the algorithm in such a way so that he can get good results so that way he may be able to publish one or two research papers one or two research papers uh, in good journals and uh, but when other researchers in the optimization community when they read that op new optimization algorithm when they apply that new optimization algorithm to their research problems if that does not work if that does not work to solve their research problems then they will not take it they will not take it they will look for some other optimization algorithm which can work for them so that way even though there are many new optimization algorithms proposed by many researchers during the last decade particularly after 2016 then uh, many of them they are dying there some are dead already and the remaining 
only those only those who are really working for solving the automation problems only those will survive those will survive and uh, uh, this is the point which i want to tell you now here there are so many dozens of uh, optimization algorithms are available advanced optimization methods now even traditional methods are available like simplex method dynamic programming etc then which method is to be used for solving this problem for example this uh, two object if we call this as multi object optimization problem then how to how which method we should use which we should which we should use to solve this whether traditional methods traditional methods if you use then you have the fear that uh, research paper may not be published but i am telling you the uh, some problems na i have seen that traditional methods have solved the problem with uh, um, with really global optimal solutions of the addition variables in less time whereas the advanced optimization methods they took long time and even they have not given the uh, accurate solutions also but uh, now the trend for the researchers is unless they publish uh, some work using advanced optimization algorithm their optimization paper may not be accepted by the reviewers with that uh, no fear or with those feelings in mind researchers are now going for advanced optimization methods and but i hear one point you always remember and some in some problems that traditional methods may be the best to, uh, methods for solving and uh, okay that is, but as i said for publication purpose people look for advanced optimization algorithms now here you know, we to solve this multi object optimization problems we there are many approaches there are many approaches but in majority of the research works on multi object optimization we find either posterior approach or priori approach what is this priori approach in that case now one combined objective function is formed if we take this example only what i am showing you then one combined objective function f will be formed the f1 and f2 na our functions f1 is the cost function f2 is the efficiency function what we do in that case in this priori approach what we do nah? and we solve this first object we solve this first object ignoring the second object ignoring the second object under these under the same constraints and under the same decision variable ranges that means as a single object automation problem we solve when we solve as a single object automation problem we will get the minimum cost because this first problem first object is minimize the cost we are solving only that object to ignoring the second object then we will get the minimum cost then that way let us write as f1 minimum f1 min f1 min then what you do you consider only efficiency maximum efficiency this as the objective function ignore the previous cost function that means considering only one objective function and under the same constraints and under the same range of solution variables then whatever you get that will be the maximum efficiency that will be considered as f2 max f2 max so in this uh, one of the approaches of this priori approach we combine both the functions like this f1 by f1 min this f1 min is when we consider only the first objective function ignoring the second objective function and f2 by f2 max this is the efficiency f2 max is the maximum efficiency which we have obtained by solving the second objective function of efficiency ignoring the cost function so we have to normalize this so that they will not to be having any units then this combined objective function means we have to combine but here minus sign is written because combined objective function suppose you want to minimize then we have to write minimize f some weight how much weight is because in these two objectives you may want to assign on different weight different weight because if you want to give equal weightage to cost and equal weightage to efficiency that is okay then no problem but as a decision maker you may be thinking i give say 60% weightage to the cost and 40% weightage to the efficiency that 60% means 0.6 efficiency of say you will give weightage weightage in your mind this object to efficiency how much important that is 40% in your mind how much the cost is important as an object to that is say 60% then what you will write here that w1 you will write as 
and the W2 you will write as 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Minus sign here we are writing because we are um, combined objective function we want to solve as a single objective function with minimization, uh, with minimization. So here minimum uh, objective function, this sign will remain same, but there's the second objective is maximization problem. To convert that into minimization problem, we use a minus sign, minus sign. So suppose F1 minimum value is 18, when we solved the cost function in, independently. Then we write here W1, weight is 0 0.6, and this objective function expression, complete expression we write here, divided by that value, numerical value of F1 min, minus weight is W2, suppose you are giving 0 0.4, 0 0.4 multiplied by the second objective function expression in terms of x1, x2, x3, x4, divided by that F2 maximum value, what you have done, that 57. This way you can write this expression, and then as a single objective, now this will be a single objective function. This single objective function you will solve, you will solve under the same constraints, under the same ranges of additional variables. Then some uh, optimum value, optimum set of x1, x2, x3, x4, you will get, you will get. So that is the compromise solution. That is the compromise solution, set of x1, x2, x3, x4. Those x1, x2, x3, x4, you substitute in this F1 and F2. So those are the finally decided optimum values of cost and optimum value of efficiency. That is called our, um, this multi-objective optimization using a priori approach, a priori approach. But NGA methods, NGA versions, NGA, NGA2, NGA3, various other versions, SPEA, or multi-objective versions of PSO, or TLBO, or multi-objective ABC, or multi-objective Grey Wolf optimization, etc., etc. They may use a posterior approach. Posterior approach. Both approaches, I am telling you, both approaches are good. Both approaches have their merits and demerits. And in this priori approach, decision maker is assigning the weights. But in posterior approach, decision maker does not assign any weights. Even if he is not aware of how much weightage is to be given to the objectives, there is a following a procedure he can do it. Like decision maker does not assign the weights and he or she follows a systematic procedure like non-dominated sorting, crowding distance competition, etc. Finally, by following these approaches, now a posterior approaches like an GA2 like that, they get a set of non-dominated solutions. They get a set of non-dominated solutions. What are these non-dominated solutions? You see this figure. You see this figure. Suppose there are two objective functions, F1 and F2. F1 and F2, two objectives. And here, this point, this is the minimum value of F1 and corresponding to maximum value of F2. Maximum value of F2. And that means for minimum value of F1, we have the maximum value of F2. If you take this one, here F1 is maximum and F2 is minimum. F2 means minimum. So actually, the points lying on this Pareto front, these are called non-dominated solutions. Non-dominated or optimal solution. These are the optimal solution. Optimal solutions also called non-dominated. Non-dominated means this second, suppose this is second solution. Second solution and first solution, both are good. Similarly, this so third solution also good, fourth solution also good, fifth also good, sixth also good, seventh also good. All are good solution. One cannot dominate the other. One cannot dominate the other. If one is suppose this first solution, that is better with respect to F1, but to, um, uh, so F2 wise, it may not be better as compared to the other solutions. Similarly, the, the second one. So uh, these are non-dominated, not dominated by the other solutions. So actually that is what's written here, Pareto optimal solution. It is a set of non-inferior solutions in the objective space, defining a boundary beyond which none of the objectives can be improved without sacrificing at least one of the other objectives, other objectives. Suppose you want to uh, have minimum value of F1, minimum value of F1, very minimum value of F1, then F2 value may not be uh, that much maximum. So that uh, sacrifice is required. If you want, you want to improve one objective, there will be decrease in the second objective. So these are all good solutions. 
all solutions are good which are on this parity frame other solutions those are non optimal those are non optimal solutions now uh, time is already i think time has already run out what i just to give you a hint when because of my other speakers i have seen they have they are going to explain you energy a2 method and uh, other uh, this uh, other posterior approaches of dealing with multi object optimization and suppose we apply energy a2 method suppose we apply energy a2 method we get a large number of solutions now i show you this to in fact case study also i have brought you but there is no time now this is a i have taken from one research paper 25 solutions 25 non dominated solutions are there 25 non dominated solutions are obtained and the design variables are these 1 2 3 4 5 6 design variables are there three objectives are there this p eta m and f three objectives are there now these are the three objective values three objective values which have been obtained by applying one um, uh, multi objective optimization approach known as sap raval gana self adaptive population raval gana this has been recently published in one of the good one of the good sci journals and uh, this procedure i suggested due to lack of time i cannot show you but this i will send that paper so i will send that paper to the organizers and by using this method well, this method is very simple uh, that here main aim is after after applying the posterior approach using energy a2 or energy a3 or any 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 multi object optimization posterior approach then after obtaining the final solutions final solutions non dominated solutions then considering these three objectives or four objectives or five objectives whatever may be the number of objectives choosing the best solution out of all these choosing out of these 25 which is the best solution which is the best solution considering these three objectives in this case study that is done and finally i think here second solution second solution considering all the three objectives putting together putting together one composite score is calculated then that second solution is having the rank 1 rank 1 solution and the third solution is considered number 2 number 2 so this is one approach which just i show you here now if it is there if it is there i show you just just give me one minute time uh, professor patel you are able to see this uh, pdf file yeah yeah yes yeah. yeah, sir it is visible Okay, this paper I will send you after this uh, presentation. You may distribute it to your participants. And here you see uh, ranking the of Pareto optimal solutions and selecting the best solution in multi and many objective optimization problems using R method. After developing the TLB algorithm, J algorithm, and uh, Rao algorithms, this uh, R method, ranking method, ranking method. of course uh, i admit that this r implies my name also rao but i call this as a ranking method for um, optimization community sake so this r method is proposed this r method is used for ranking of the pareto optimal solutions after you apply energy a2 or any multi object to posterior approach a set of non dominated solutions you will get out of those uh, non dominated solutions which solution is the best considering all the objectives together together so for that to this uh, um, method is proposed and here in this uh, i have taken up three examples one is electro discharge machining process in that case 50 50 non dominated solutions are there then how to find out the best uh, 50 non dominated solutions and objectives are uh, four objectives are four objectives are there four objectives and the four decision variables then finally this method has suggested i think uh, that fifth solution fifth solution that has got the first rank and then another example another example that is having 30 30 non dominated solutions and here objectives objectives are six objectives six objectives are there four decision variables are there then 30 non dominated solutions are obtained then out of these 
considering all these six objectives, which one is the best solution? For that also, after applying this approach, we found that this first solution, which has got to rank one, that is the best. And the third case study, third case study that is related to some solar-assisted Brighton engine, in these 25 non-dominated solutions are obtained with three objectives, three objectives and, uh, uh, and six design variables. There also we applied this and the second solution, second solution uh, that has got to first rank. And of course, then uh, we have compared uh, this uh, proposed method with other existing methods and these graphs are showing how this proposed method is simple and uh, stable and uh, um, yes, this is the discussion on the proposed R method and comparisons with other ranking methods. And this paper after uh, five minutes, uh, I will send even pseudo code is available and the tables are also given how to assign the weights. These readily available. I have prepared these tables for my side. So the researchers can make use of uh, due to Sir, there is a internet problem with uh, Rouser's connection. Okay. I think, uh, I think we're, uh, I'm not able to even connect my call to Rausler also. And as Rausler was having already uh, scheduled lecture at 10 30. Uh, so we may have a uh, uh, so time to connect with him also because he's having a lecture. But it was really a wonderful uh, session by Ramsar. It started from the very basic uh, of uh, optimization. Uh, <laughs> Started from very basic about optimization and took it to many and multi objective optimization and different concepts of like how to find out the best solution out of multi. This is a very recent topic, even using my PhD, I use only utopia concept to find out the best uh, objective. And 
now we probably will refer to that after paper what sir will share with us. Uh, it will, uh, now I request uh, our team member to propose a lot of thanks. Give us a sir, please. Hello. Am I audible, sir? Sir, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, very good morning to one and all present here. I am Dr. S. C. Srivastava, Assistant Professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering. On behalf of GC Balsar, it gives me an immense pleasure to deliver a word of thanks for this FDP and inaugural ceremony. First of all, I would like to thank our special guest, Dr. R. Venkata Rao, Professor HAG, Mechanical Engineering and Director in Charge, SB National Institute of Technology, Surat who despite of his busy schedule has given time to deliver keynote at this FDP. Thank you so much, sir. Further, I take this opportunity to thank our respected principal, sir, Dr. B.S. Purani, sir, for his commendable support, motivation, and encouragement for all the time we have. Another link. Thank <laughs> you. 